In order to keep the train running on electricity, engineers have been tirelessly researching for nearly a century. This is the development history of the pantograph. Although it may seem inconspicuous, solving it is quite challenging. The earliest pantograph designs were relatively simple, consisting of a conductor and a spring structure. The conductor relied on the force of the spring to make contact with the wire, thereby achieving the purpose of supplying power to the motor. However, due to a lack of stability and excessive friction, it was easy for the equipment to become damaged. To improve stability, engineers made improvements by tilting the conductor backward and readjusting the spring and the support structure of the pantograph. This significantly enhanced stability. But then a new problem was discovered. The force of the spring was difficult to control, which could easily damage the cable. So the engineers added a pull cord at the back to balance the spring force, thus solving the problem. To make the wire connection more precise, the engineers added a grooved copper head at the connection point. However, over time, another issue was discovered. Due to the continuous operation of the train, this metal groove would inevitably wear out, requiring frequent replacement. To address this, the engineers replaced the contact head with a long metal rod, and the cable was designed in a serpentine shape. This way, the contact point of the head constantly changes, increasing the contact area and significantly reducing the wear on the head. To further reduce wear on the overhead cable, the engineers added carbon strips to the contact surface, ensuring smooth operation even when the train is traveling at high speeds. Additionally, the side angles on both sides were extended and improved, known as the bow collector. This design helps the train achieve a smooth transition between overhead cables when switching tracks, otherwise the wires might get caught underneath the collector head. However, as the train speed continued to increase, problems gradually emerged with this design, namely air resistance and vibration. The reason was that airflow formed vortices behind it. To solve this problem in 1903, engineers changed the pantograph to a symmetrical double arm structure. This successfully resolved the vibration issue. Drivers could also independently control the height of the pantograph by observing the height of the cable. However, this double arm pantograph was bulky and heavy, making it neither energy efficient nor flexible to use. To address this issue, engineers designed a single arm pantograph using new technology. Its base is a four bar mechanism with the contact head mounted at the end of a yellow rod extension, allowing for flexible adjustments in height. However, this caused the angle of the contact head to change with its height, making the contact with the overhead wire less effective. But engineers solved this with a clever design. This was achieved by introducing a balance rod, which connects to the lower arm and extends to the collector head, also forming a four-bar mechanism. The balance rod counteracts the rotation of the contact head through reverse torque, ensuring that the collector head remains level across all heights. The lower arm uses a pneumatic piston device to rotate, allowing the pantograph to be lowered or disconnected at will. The entire design is simple and efficient. It has been in use ever since. In summary, the pantograph can be considered an engineering marvel, providing reliable power support for modern high-speed trains.